welcome Rem back to the AA. Uh, those of you who are familiar with the work of the school know that he has been uh, wonderfully generous uh, over the last few years and uh, he has been to the school and we are uh, obviously familiar and uh, very much uh, support his work and his project and I'm sure most of you are, are also aware of the fact that Rem is here in London to receive the RIBA gold medal uh, tomorrow night so uh, I'm sure later on we'll all uh, uh, have a drink um, to his uh, health and uh, salute him and of course I think on Thursday there's also an event at the uh, at the Architecture Foundation. This has been uh, uh, an incredibly productive year for, for REM with uh, so many projects uh, with the CCTV, with Seattle, with uh, IIT, with the embassy in Berlin. Uh, I think uh, we've seen a lot of uh, uh, incredible, uh, incredible projects. I think instead of uh, really doing a sort of historical uh, uh, recounting of the work, which presumably in some form or fashion will happen tomorrow, uh, Rem is really here uh, tonight to talk specifically about this uh, magazine book, uh, the ambivalent uh, publication called Content, um, which uh, he um, he signed earlier in the uh, in the in the gallery, and of course through that, we'll uh, hopefully discuss his uh, current thoughts, ideas, and position in relation to to architecture. This uh, this particular. Uh, publication, though, is uh, is obviously a very, very uh, uh, particular one at uh, at this moment because I, I'm sure some people will remember that uh, maybe a year or two ago, Rem uh, did a talk here, which was uh, probably a, a kind of response to some of his uh, his critics uh, in terms of his his involvement with with architecture, the the whole fascination with with globalism. And this, this lecture of a couple of years ago was more specifically addressing a kind of political polemic and trying to really move towards, uh, towards a more, more specifically political agenda. Contents, however, is, uh, is, uh, is, is peculiar in the sense that it's not, a, it's not uh, a straightforward political manifesto. For those of you who have seen it, it's somewhere between sort of I'm a celebrity, get me out of here, and also a political discourse. It actually brings very much a sort of uh, contemporary uh, cultural ideas together with uh, very serious issues that, that uh, obviously uh, are very close to his heart as we also witnessed with the involvement of uh, uh, OMA with, for example, uh, the, the uh, Netherlands and the EU projects and, and things of, of, of that sort. So. Um, uh, I think it would be very interesting to to see how Rem is really uh, positioning himself between this this project of of contemporary culture, the kind of mediated culture, and also his fascination with with politics, especially given the fact that so many of the projects that he's been involved in over the last uh, few years have been very particular kinds of institutions which often are devoid of the kind of uh, of everyday uh, practice or everyday uh, uh, social engagement which is which is part of the TV culture in some way which is being addressed in 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 terms of the uh, the, the contents publication so um, I'm sure it's going to be um, it's going to be a very provocative presentation please welcome Rem Kulhas. Um, uh, because it is uh, very difficult to uh, feel uh, intimacy with any audience uh, at this point. Uh, uh, for me, the AA is a kind of uh, site of token intimacy. Uh, and th for that reason, uh, I want to really uh, speak about content in a very direct way and uh, tell you why we did the book uh, in uh, the way it we finally did it and, and what our reasons are. and what the overt and covert uh, dimensions of it are. Um, I first want to talk about a number of uh, very unpleasant burdens, and maybe f in terms of doing another book, uh, the most unpleasant burden was SML XL, uh, for obvious reasons, uh, because it set a very high uh, standard. Uh, it was megalomaniac. 
and uh, it was also kind of followed in a kind of almost nauseating way. Uh, and uh, it it became, uh, and even at the time, it felt kind of more or less as a kind of premature tombstone. Um, another burden um, that we have been kind of more or less uh, explicit about is, of course, the burden of what we call the Yes regime, the, which uh, now we would kind of simply define as the uh, absolute priority of money uh, over any other issue uh, in the current culture, or maybe it was in the current, in the culture of the past uh, uh, eight years or 10 years. Uh, and the difficulty which that uh, implies in terms of the practice of architecture. In the book, we made uh, a kind of very uh, elaborate uh, mural where here we kind of basically have the stock market of Wall Street. Here we have the events that took place in the last uh, decade. This is only one page. And here we have the architecture that kind of was co coinciding with these uh, particular moments. And uh, to make a long story short, and, and, and kind of to make a long story also boring, uh, it is very clear that architecture, uh, through this idolatry of uh, Wall Street, has been forced uh, to become more and more uh, exhibitionist and uh, uh, demonstrative. Um, at the same time, um, I am painfully aware of the kind of vulnerability of architecture, not only kind of after, I think, that the idolatry of the market really uh, cut off the pedestal of our architecture in the sense that the architect always pretended, and I think that his real reason for being was that he was serving kind of mankind. Uh, through the events of the past 10 years, we can no longer claim that. Uh, we are at most serving kind of particular interests. Uh, so that gives one kind of huge form of vulnerability. Uh, but on the other hand, the, in the classical kind of method of the architecture, uh, the classical status of the architect as it is here represented in Chandigarh, where I happened to be uh, last week, uh, the, the, we see another v uh, major vulnerability, namely the one of kind of utter irrelevance uh, in terms of uh, any kind of recent political events uh, internationally or there on the site. Uh, it is, on the one hand, uh, a very moving and kind of beautiful, but also kind of utterly pathetic sight that this uh, center of uh, a new city is uh, completely cordoned off and uh, uh, forbidden uh, in a certain way, and that all the claims and pretensions uh, that the architect uh, only 30 years ago uh, would feel without uh, too many inhibitions. Uh, are patently nonsensical. Uh, and, and maybe the wreckage of architecture is still very beautiful, as, as perhaps in this image. Uh, but uh, we are, in a way, kind of moving and maneuvering between uh, uh, various uh, images of, of absurdity, the absurdity of the uh, architect on a pedestal and the equal absurdity of the architect off a pedestal. Um, Another burden is, of course, the uh, relentless and perhaps uh, self-defensive stance uh, of architecture uh, in terms of, you know, if we're not relevant, uh, at least we can be kind of irrelevant in a kind of beautiful manner. Uh, and uh, uh, w which I think uh, to a certain extent is, is uh, respectable. And of course, I'm not talking about Gary itself, but about the whole system of uh, publication, media, etc., that supports us, and that in its very uh, powerful slickness uh, seems to perhaps uh, little by little uh, remove uh, authenticity, the, the little kind of reservoir of authenticity we still have. Um, another burden, of course, is a kind of very uh, strong uh, uh, movement uh, in architecture that uh, makes uh, incredibly um, strong claims for uh, newness. Uh, and uh, that, uh, although this is, may not be one of the kind of most fortunate uh, iterations of it, non-standard architecture, <laughs> ne nevertheless uh, uh, forms uh, uh, very clearly a kind of competing 
uh, and competitive uh, presence, uh, particularly claiming kind of new forms of uh, generating architecture and therefore new uh, architecture that uh, seemingly threaten to condemn what we would do uh, to irrelevance. Um, another burden, and I, I'm totally aware that it's kind of really ridiculous to uh, uh, claim that uh, honors and respect uh, is a form of burden, but nevertheless, I would say uh, it uh, really makes uh, us and myself, uh, uh, with every new step, uh, unfreer or less free. Uh, this is the uh, uh, moment that uh, I received the Pritzker Prize. Uh, this is me. Kind of, uh, it was in a site in Jerusalem that had to be guarded by uh, the Israeli kind of uh, military, uh, uh, and really, it, it was a kind of critical moment for me in in the sense that uh, the entire charade of the architecture profession and uh, its uh, craven uh, lack of uh, political uh, kind of awareness uh, really became a kind of almost repulsive, uh, a quite a repulsive intensity. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, when I received the prize, the um, prize givers were so nervous about my reaction that I wasn't told who would give the speech. Uh, so I had to uh, prepare two kinds of speeches, one in case it was unpolitical and the second in case it became political. And uh, it became political, so I basically said at this uh, particular moment that the uh, total embarrassment of the past uh, 10 years was that uh, political uh, oblivious now was considered uh, an important part of any architect's equipment. Um, and then, of course, there are is a very deep uh, awareness and very permanent uh, awareness, which is uh, uh, kind of both gloomy and exhilarating, uh, of kind of waning and increasing popularity. Uh, I think uh, whether anyone admits it, <laughs> admits it or not, uh, there are uh, huge fluctuations. And, and of course, uh, kind of ultimately, it is much nicer to feel popular than to feel unpopular. Or rather, as moments of unpopularity, you have to uh, define new rhetorical stratagems that uh, uh, make you seemingly happy that you're not popular. Um, so, so anyway, uh, the, the, the complexity of that kind of situation uh, is uh, evident. Um, so um, after uh, uh, SMLXL, uh, simply th through boredom and through engagement with uh, clients like Prada in the, that are commercial, kind of believe it or not, uh, our, our popular t uh, popularity uh, went into a kind of uh, a steep descent. Uh, and at the same time, we felt that we were producing interesting work, and particularly that um, the, we were um, embarking on uh, an ad adventure, uh, which was to uh, not only operate with an uh, architectural office, but also to create a mirror image of that office, AMO. I'm not going to explain, but I assume it's known, uh, which was a, a simple reaction to the fact that uh, architecture is so slow that it, in itself it can no longer follow the very uh, precarious coalitions of uh, opinion or ambition or the uh, agreements uh, that uh, exist in this uh, current economy. I, I, I think that almost no ambition or consensus holds for longer than three years. And uh, on, the, on the other hand, almost no architectural project can be produced within three years. So uh, basically that conflict uh, inspired us to create AMO. And what we were trying to do over the past five years is to create uh, the largest possible, possible split uh, in, in ballet terms. Uh, on the one hand, an extreme focus on uh, architecture, but on the uh, other hand, an extreme focus on what is not architecture, and uh, actually an aggressive departure from architecture. So, ironically, and 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 then after five years of that, we we needed to or wanted to represent the results, uh, and it is we represented it in both an exhibition in Berlin, 
in Miss Universe uh, Neue National Gallery and in a uh, book slash catalog that uh, are part of it. Um, this is the exhibition in Berlin uh, content. Uh, we were kind of really uh, extremely happy that we could inhabit this building uh, and we felt that uh, only by a kind of robust uh, engagement uh, with the container uh, would we be able to uh, uh, overcome MIS or deal with MIS. And so therefore, uh, in the 2,000 meters uh, of the hull, we created uh, a spectacle of uh, seemingly random, but, but actually deliberately um, working with MIS uh, uh, environments uh, that were based on walls, uh, 150 tall, and uh, that created a kind of datum over the entire thing, and then uh, a series of uh, information uh, walls uh, that were sometimes supporting architecture, but in many times simply offering the context in which architectural kind of projects today have to uh, exist and perform. Um, simultaneous to uh, the creation of AMO, we felt that uh, we were producing so many, uh, so much ideas and so much contents that we could in a way uh, maybe afford to produce a magazine uh, or we were very intrigued by the idea of, of creating a magazine which uh, in this case would really uh, uh, drastically overcome all the problems of architectural publishing by shamelessly going uh, and, and, and enlisting and finding other uh, audiences. And so we looked at uh, you know, a number of contemporary uh, topologies uh, that are more about uh, information or more about a kind of extreme focus on something. Uh, there are, for instance, in Japan, extremely kind of intelligent gay guides that uh, in, in, uh, create with an unbelievable density the, the information that is apparently necessary to, to survive or flourish uh, in that culture uh, as a gay man. Uh, but we also looked, of course, at other uh, non-architectural kind of sources of, of density and overlapping and, and basically content, uh, all with the uh, explicit mission to uh, overcome what, what we saw as the fundamental inhibited boredom of architectural pu publishing. Um, the editor is an American uh, uh, called uh, Benham McGettrick. Uh, who had some experience in Japan, but otherwise was not connected to architecture. Uh, he came and, and became the uh, fundamental collaborator uh, in terms of how to put the book together. And one very early uh, decision that we took was that kind of pictures like this would have no place uh, in the book. We then also explored other prototypes of uh, vehicles of publication and, and looked around and found uh, Jack, uh, kind of very uh, nice and intelligent format, uh, which was able to uh, really condense information and, and uh, eliminate or suspend uh, taste in many cases. Uh, and I was lucky to ask the, the authors of this magazine at the moment that they were uh, uh, hesitant about their kind of future. And that meant that uh, from uh, early September to the middle of November, they were able to work in our office and uh, create in, in a very rash uh, and in a way deliberately thoughtless process the book. Um, uh, here you see the, uh, the, the environment, the typical architectural environment. Um, the, it was very difficult to clear the mess uh, uh, because we had no guiding uh, principle for uh, presenting the material. Uh, the s cleverness of s small, medium, large was to take scale as the uh, uh, for as as the norm to uh, create some clarity in its uh, production. Uh, what became the notion here is uh, a strictly geographical ordering. Uh, of projects where we started uh, on the west coast of America and end uh, in China. And so basically it is a kind of, the project is, a, the book is a kind of tracking of the world uh, through these uh, projects and through the kind of randomness uh, in a certain way or mixture of randomness and now planning of our uh, work. Uh, here you see the kind of process, not 
particularly interested, and here you see the cover. Uh, the cover was made by the designers, and, and, and obviously we, we gave them carte blanche, uh, uh, and, and it was really a serious effort at, at, at main not maintaining the, the kind of uh, usual architectural instinct uh, of control. I think it's very interesting to, there is now a, a recent proliferation of uh, interesting and intelligent architectural productions. Uh, I think it's uh, very interesting to, to compare the book to the foreign office uh, catalog that uh, just appeared, where you could say that control has been um, exercised uh, uh, absolutely to the other degree uh, of extreme, to the other extreme. So no two books could be more dissimilar than those two. Uh, even though probably the motives are very similar. Um, in, in order to create the, to guarantee the maximum dissemination, we decided uh, and working with Tashin that we would find real advertisers uh, because we wanted the book to be as cheap as possible. And in the end, we were able to raise money uh, through this uh, strategy that uh, enabled us to uh, sell the book below 10 euro, which was for us a magic kind of dimension. Um, but the advertisers were not all classical because we were also able to uh, convince uh, certain artists, uh, or so this is a, a, an advertiser for Matthias Friens, the famous fashion designer, um, uh, for, the, for the cover, but we were also uh, able to convince the Dutch government uh, to uh, put an ad say yes to everything uh, 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 where uh, they kind of welcome the future uh, with many reservations uh, we know now uh, the future members uh, of the European Union so uh, actually simply by exploring other sources of uh, funding we discovered that uh, uh, advertising in itself can be kind of surprising um, versatile medium uh, also making a degree of contribution to the book uh, the book is about crimes committed to architecture, uh, architecture destroyed, so there are some general issues. It's uh, crimes committed by architecture, uh, the well-known work of the kind of uh, architectural and um, the architectural um, details of the Israeli-Palestinian uh, conflict that are in itself uh, rather horrifying. And I myself, in the writing, uh, uh, tried to commit extreme discipline of writing in a very compressed and uh, lucid and uncomplicated, not so much uncomplicated, but very direct language and um, uh, with very condensed elements. There's a uh, very strong journalistic element to the whole thing. Uh, there are many interviews. This is an interview with uh, Martha Stewart and, and uh, her effect on the world, uh, basically. Uh, there is also uh, a kind of uh, an element of autocritique or uh, discoveries that um, uh, time, and, and in this, this is the first time that we are really looking seriously at the past, that there are many more um, uh, kind of similarities, for instance, between, on the one hand, the painter Vermeer, who was known uh, for his intimate uh, depiction of daily life, and the Dutch invention Big Brother, one of the most successful Dutch inventions of the last uh, five years, which is also uh, almost uh, Vermeer, but taken to a kind of industrial strength exhibitionism. So we, we are, in that sense, acting as cultural critics and, and seeing the similarities uh, uh, then and now, uh, but also see how the kind of idea of Big Brother uh, in itself can mutate uh, as it did in Africa, where it is not uh, limited to a single country and, and the kind of uh, provincial events that would happen in it, but where simply by becoming a trans-African Big Brother, uh, it is one of the first effective ways that uh, of African integration much more effective uh, in its results than some of the uh, political attempts that have been made. Um, uh, this is one of those moments. Can somebody help me? I don't know what to do. Uh, the A technician? Uh, I don't know what to do.
Sorry. Oh, I think it went to the end. Okay. Yeah, hold on. Yeah, yeah, perfect. What do you want to do here? Huh? This one? And I want the, this one. Yeah, okay, thanks. Um, there are, between the lines and overtly, uh, a number of uh, changes in our mentality. Um, uh, at, at some point, um, we became very critical ourselves uh, of uh, the kind of I am a camera position that uh, has um, been the basis of uh, some of our work uh, on, on the city. Uh, the Harvard project on the city, uh, of course, never claimed to uh, offer solutions. Uh, and uh, particularly in the Lagos kind of episode, uh, it, we could easily be criticized for uh, simply looking at the city without, uh, impassively, without being provoked into thinking about the solutions. And uh, actually, I feel that one of the more interesting results of 9-11, uh, uh, and this is the last time I will mention it, the date, uh, is that uh, somehow the uh, idolatry of the market has uh, been dented, uh, and that all the uh, authorities that uh, used to be uh, so uh, um, unquestioned, uh, such as the International Monetary Fund, funds and the World Bank, you know, are now uh, treated with much more skepticism uh, in other areas of the world, and that perhaps that um, uh, skepticism in general about the market economy and, and the kind of vague alternatives that are emerging against it, uh, for instance in Brazil, but certainly also in Thailand and Malaysia, and, and of course in China, uh, are perhaps also enabling us uh, to uh, in, imagine architecture differently, so that perhaps uh, if those changes uh, actually uh, continue and, and uh, confirm themselves, that we are uh, perhaps able to emancipate ourselves from uh, our past uh, servility, uh, uh, as it is implied by the market economy, and can uh, we acquire perhaps some uh, autonomy and some independence and, and therefore do different work. So for that reason, the Lagos book will be partly a documentary, but we also are now working uh, for the government uh, of the city uh, in terms of what to do about Lagos. And that was, of course, the great taboo uh, underlying uh, much of our work. Uh, and so that is for us uh, an, an interesting experimentation, you know, where, where to start and how to in intervene. Um, there are some inter interesting anecdotes. Uh, uh, Oscar Niemeyer has a small classroom uh, in his office where uh, any visitor can get a kind of short history uh, of architecture uh, and, and, and lesson in architecture. Uh, uh, I went to, and, and photography is in a way becoming another uh, important part of the repertoire uh, where we looked at uh, Niemeyer's buildings in context and in a way confirmed on the one hand their, uh, how they drown in the city, but also how beautifully they merge with it. Uh, and, and how interesting it is if modern architecture is not uh, presented as strictly beautiful, but also as uh, uh, harsh and ugly. Uh, anyway, what has been perhaps the most uh, kind of exciting, uh, and, and which is only hidden in the book, uh, uh, feature of the past two or three years is that uh, instead of being uh, uh, forced to take uh, almost any commission, and instead of being uh, beholden to um, uh, largely commercial uh, clients, uh, we could uh, develop an agenda uh, uh, simply by shifting e east, uh, and that in this agenda, the nature, the true nature 
of the work uh, itself uh, can also change. This is a kind of diagrammatic uh, representation of uh, Europe and Asia, and uh, uh, simply where uh, previously uh, our concentration was on America and Europe, it is now clearly on this uh, territory, and uh, with kind of results that uh, fundamentally change the nature, not so much of the architecture we do, but of the potential projects uh, that we can do. Um, we had an intuition uh, uh, after September 11 that the main transatlantic embrace, uh, which is represented here in the uh, traffic of planes, um, is uh, waning or diminishing, and that another kind of circle is emerging. And actually, you see that uh, the orange is diminishing, but the red is increasing, and that there is now actually uh, an interesting arc between Europe, uh, Arabia, uh, Thailand, China, which actually is increasing uh, uh, all the time, and which perhaps in not too long uh, time will be of equal strength and uh, intensity. Um, the irony, of course, of the world is that uh, all of us in this new red circle are supposed to uh, speak English, uh, or that English is the only vehicle in which we can communicate. It's, of course, for the English not really a problem, but perhaps for all the other nations uh, it's a problem. And that, therefore, we have no vehicles of communication. Kind of most of the mutual information is exchanged uh, through media that are English uh, and English-owned. Uh, but there are interesting little footnotes. Uh, for instance, the Spiegel, the kind of German magazine, is uh, preparing an uh, English edition so that everyone who is not Anglo can nevertheless uh, communicate uh, directly. That would be kind of for instance, a beautiful vehicle to communicate with Iran or to know what is happening in kind of certain parts of Russia, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, little by little, I think that there is an emerging infrastructure of another dialogue. Uh, I am not talking about this. Uh, the European project, uh, I think, is in a way part of that dialogue. Uh, this is the uh, representation of all the kind of projects and territories where Europe is active. Uh, and you can see that, uh, again, it is uh, an emerging uh, zone, perhaps, from South America to, to Russia, uh, where more and more uh, European norms uh, are uh, adopted so that the entire um, seemingly uh, impotent power of Europe, uh, which is only articulated through rules uh, and regulations and norms, uh, is actually expanding, uh, which perhaps then kind of shows that the military uh, frenzy of America is, is a sign of weakness and not of strength. Uh, for Europe, we are now definitely kind of working, uh, and uh, we will unveil the kind of European project uh, soon. But this is kind of perhaps one, one of the uh, devices uh, to, to inform uh, Europeans you know, through their passport of their history. Part of the uh, agenda uh, is also, uh, and, and I think I said it if I didn't say it, that this past few years have for the first time really enabled us a feeling of uh, establishing an agenda on our own and not uh, and, and overcome a certain amount of uh, dependency. Uh, part of the agenda is to also uh, reinvestigate the uh, notions of the utopian, uh, but also to expand it. Uh, of course, the utopian uh, was uh, in its uh, Soviet form in the 20s one important trigger uh, because it simply seemed to announce that uh, the architectural imagination could now claim any part of human life uh, for itself, not only form, not only beauty, but, but uh, the actual intricate scenarios uh, of, of uh, human life. Uh, of course, seemingly kind of redundant, but perhaps again more or uh, potentially relevant. Um, another, and for us, uh, exciting part of a different agenda and a new agenda is to uh, engage the past. Um, 
it is very difficult, I think, for uh, architects in our position to um, deal with the past because in most cases we are supposed to either modify uh, or destroy it. Uh, but we were very lucky to get two uh, projects where we could actually abstain from any new form or which were dependent on uh, abstaining from any, any new form. And the, one of them is the extension of the Hermitage. Uh, this is the Hermitage Museum in Petersburg. Uh, they have a new building, which is this one. And we, in the form of AMO, kind of uh, solemnly sworn not to change anything to the architecture and even to kind of maintain the wrecked condition uh, of certain parts of the building, uh, have the task to investigate how all the treasures of the Hermitage can be redistributed over all these new buildings, and what, uh, in terms of curatorial strategies and potentials, we can do with this new extension. Um, these are all the topologies of room in the different uh, 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 hermitized buildings. And of course, our building is the only one which is not uh, rectilinear, it's slightly bent. So it is the only one that has a series of eccentric spaces. This is the uh, flat version of all the rooms of the hermitage on the map of Petersburg. So you see it's so kind of colossal that there is an almost urbanistic obligation to uh, consider how to um, uh, create this territory. This is a collection of all the walls where the color code is basically uh, historical rooms, kind of rooms with historical elements and kind of neutral rooms or red rooms. So it's a, an incredibly intricate puzzle how to distribute uh, over all this uh, collection, over all this repertoire of space the three and a half million pieces of the Hermitage. And here we are kind of investigating, for instance, what would happen if each room contained one item. And if you were able to m select the most kind of stunning item or the most appropriate item or the most surprising item for each of the rooms. And what is exciting is that actually the, the and, and that is inevitably one of the uh, interests of moving east or going east, that since uh, the east uh, in principle has been less affluent and more neglected, that neglect itself uh, has avoided uh, uh, huge waves of modernization or commercialization. Uh, there are no museum stores in the uh, uh, Hermitage, nor are there kind of museum clubs, etc., and all the paraphernalia that are inevitable in uh, America, so to some extent we are have the luxury of being able to uh, step into a situation before almost as if it is we go back in time. Um, one of the other uh, exciting uh, things also to do with the past and with history uh, to some extent is uh, a, a project on the issue of preservation in Beijing. Uh, you probably know that uh, the Chinese are uh, relentlessly accused, uh, and sometimes justifiably so, of uh, destroying their own history, uh, where you have to say that one of the, its fundamental problems is that the substance of Asian city is fundamentally different from that of the Western city, uh, and its, its intricacy, not only through its intricacy, but also through its materials, so uh, we were able to, uh, we, we are now reconsidering for the city of Beijing what to do with its past. And that um, uh, enabled this uh, kind of really exciting uh, excursion uh, in a certain way into history and in the history of preservation itself. And we found that in the first act of preservation or the first law of preservation dates from 1790 uh, and it was two years after the French Revolution or three years which is not surprising because of course if there's a revolution you have to decide what to keep and a uh, second important one was in 1877 uh, under the height of the industrialization in England which also was not surprising because of course the industrialization kind of destroyed almost everything but if you look at these two laws and the kind of milieu or the context of inventions that surrounded them, uh, which are the X-ray, the stethoscope, the uh, photograph, 
and the railway, you begin to Im discover that, or you can possibly imagine that the apparent opposition between development and preservation, which is now s leading to such an impasse and, and have such a an, uh, profoundly negative effect on almost any city we know, either in terms of uh, an almost constipation and, and dominance of the old, such as in Paris, or in terms of uh, a kind of relentless destruction, such as in China, is perhaps uh, not necessary, or that uh, there is an other option of t treating them both as aspects of the same thing. We looked at what is being preserved. Uh, it started with monuments, then churches, centers, and now we are in a kind of situation that almost everything is uh, uh, preserved from concentration camps to department stores. So the uh, selectiveness of preservation is disappearing. The scale of preservation is uh, escalating kind of relentlessly. It started with monuments and buildings, then environments of buildings and quarters, then entire landscapes. And now there is even um, a uh, uh, claim for to preserve certain parts of the moon, uh, and, and, and maybe uh, justifiably again. Then we looked at what the interval uh, between the present and that which is uh, to be preserved, which uh, in 200 years ago was 2,000 years, uh, which uh, in 1900 was uh, 200 years, and which is now kind of reduced to uh, almost zero years. And I think that is an uh, incredibly fascinating moment because it, it is, what it means is that uh, we are overtaken by preservation and that uh, we don't have the luxury anymore to treat preservation as a kind of retroactive uh, effect, but that we need to uh, conceive of preservation as a prospective uh, dimension, which could mean that actually time uh, can be introduced in the whole discourse uh, of the city and, and duration uh, in a way that we haven't seen uh, for a very long time and that that can perhaps also then uh, make the whole uh, uh, uncreative discussion of uh, tabula rasa, etc. Uh, mood. Um, one of the kind of exciting uh, things that we wanted to uh, kind of uh, investigate uh, in the book uh, is that if we are so well known and uh, that theoretically we should then also have a kind of certain amount of power uh, and uh, we uh, introduced a campaign uh, to test our power and that is a campaign to kill the skyscraper. Um, uh, the, we have all seen the skyscraper uh, as, it, as it kind of uh, marches from uh, America uh, to Europe and Africa and where it has now its kind of uh, provisional culmination in Asia. And we have also seen that kind of in terms of the imagination and creativity that was still present here, uh, on its march eastward it has lost systematically in content uh, and potential. Uh, to the point where now height is the only uh, factor. Uh, in uh, the 30s, uh, I suggested in Deleuze, New York, there was real inv s uh, programmatic invention in the skyscraper. It, the skyscraper was a tool of a different culture. Uh, different events could happen. Now we have uh, Americans going uh, all over the world and uh, basically reassuring uh, the world uh, that the skyscraper is harmless. Uh, Harry Kopp uh, uh, of <laughs> gives lectures in uh, China, the skyscraper as a citizen. Uh, and of course the implication is that uh, the skyscraper can be very well behaved, uh, that uh, it doesn't uh, do any damage. And, and so uh, what we found really exciting is that both in China we are now very active in terms of exposing the hollowness uh, of the claim, uh, but also uh, the uh, uselessness of the skyscraper in terms of creating genuinely urban conditions uh, once it is kind of used as an element of kind of fairly far and few between uh, dispersed uh, density. Uh, and, and that campaign, uh, and also that kind of entirely corrupt version of the skyscraper has reached its kind of temporary apotheosis uh, in the uh, Roppongi Hills uh, KPF project 
which is topped by uh, uh, Gluckman uh, and uh, a kind of museum uh, on top where uh, people like Sirota and uh, Glendar of MoMA are uh, giving their kind of reputation, uh, lending their reputation. So, uh, th and this is a total experiment, but uh, we are both in, te in terms of teaching and example trying to see whether we can counter this uh, exploitation. Um, instead of uh, where, you, you could ask where does our creativity go then, uh, or how do we channel and in what domains do we channel our creativity? Uh, so I've had kind of in initiative, politics, uh, power, uh, etc. but creativity is of course and there, I think our collaboration with uh, Settle Balmond uh, is, is a key uh, element. Uh, in the book, there's a kind of little kind of vignette, which for me has a kind of almost hypnotic value. Because when World Trade Center had collapsed, uh, Arab was asked to analyze on co uh, and develop computer models of how the uh, infernal heat uh, of the site was dissipating. And, and the, the sequence of dissipation kind of enabled the planners of New York, uh, or the, rather the planners of the uh, dumping of the World Trade Center, to know where to begin. Literally, which uh, sections of the wreck would be uh, no longer be red hot first. And what was became very uh, interesting to witness uh, Cecil is that the kind of intellectual ambition of that program seemed to be almost similar, if not to exceed the uh, incentive to think of a skyscraper, uh, in a way very perversely, that the wreckage of the skyscraper seemed to be a more interesting provocation for a modern structural mind than the construction of a skyscraper itself. Um, and that was really uh, uh, a key moment. Uh, at the same time, we were planning uh, almost as a counterpart CCTV and because there is a lot of skepticism in, uh, against CCTV in China, uh, we were forced uh, increasingly and almost uh, to the point of crazy detail to really uh, make our case and, and analyze the building in kind of further and further detail to prove it would stand, to prove it would withstand uh, earthquakes, etc., etc. Et so in the end, uh, Arab and, and ourselves developed an almost voyeuristic, obscene intimacy with the behavior of every single part, uh, to, the part uh, to the point where they realized that, for instance, to construct each of the towers and to make sure that they would be w on one level eventually so that they could be coupled uh, was, of course, hard enough. But then when they then looked at the exposure to the sun, they discovered that uh, the coupling could never take place during daytime because the expansion of the parts would be different. So it's a, a, a building that can only be uh, united uh, at six o'clock in the morning when the two halves have uh, uh, um, cooled off uh, sufficiently. So I, I think that that kind of knowledge has probably never been generated for structures. And, and I think that neither the knowledge of the melting World Trade Center nor the... So I think that that could be or will be a source of uh, creativity. Then, of course, uh, finally, uh, what we can do with this position is perhaps uh, to run risk uh, and, and to run well-defined risks. And perhaps the biggest risk we're running kind of right now is the building of CCTV itself, where we are assuming that uh, working for and within the current uh, condition of China uh, enables an architect or could enable an architect to uh, make a contribution to uh, a society which eventually will benefit to the benefit of its uh, that society, but also to the benefit uh, of uh, the larger uh, kind of global context, uh, but it is of course um, uh, a big gamble. Um, one of the tragedies of kind of uh, or the, the 
maybe it's not, not a tragedy, but one of the kind of peculiar aspects of the Chinese situation is, of course, that, uh, and this diagram is from the Harvard uh, China book, which shows the number of uh, architects per thousand people in China, which is very limited. Uh, the average income of architects, uh, uh, Europe has many architects uh, with high incomes, and uh, China has very few architects with uh, very little income. But uh, this is the building, uh, what, what each of them builds. Uh, we, built, uh, uh, we built almost nothing, and, and, and they built everything, and are therefore, uh, by definition, the most important. And then uh, we, we combined it with this uh, diagram. This shows the kind of rates of urbanization in America and Europe, and the rate of urbanization in China now, or in Southeast Asia. And here, I apologize that it's unreadable, here are all the manifestos that Europe and America generated uh, between 1900 and uh, kind of 1980. And what is very noticeable is that we stopped uh, thinking when they had to construct uh, the city. And so that, uh, therefore, uh, uh, the kind of urbanization takes place in a very uh, cruel void of, of uh, Western thinking. Uh, and, and also a cool void uh, of, of Western support. And, and obviously the enterprise of CCTV is kind of inscribing it, itself in that void uh, and trying to find uh, what uh, within the uh, ambiguous uh, space of China, which is partly communist and partly not communist, uh, where, whether there is space to do significant or meaningful or useful architecture. Uh, uh, and, and of course, one of the kind of biggest gambles is whether by 2008, when the building is finished, uh, the China will have evolved uh, in, in nature that, uh, to an extent that uh, the CCTV is no longer uh, an apparatus of the state uh, propaganda, but turning into uh, the equivalent of uh, TV, of uh, BBC. So recently, in, in the past weeks, there have been incredible movement in terms of that kind of liberalization and even privatization. So there is a possibility that the gamble is not wrong. Anyway, uh, so the, the real intention of uh, uh, content is to be uh, distributed very widely. And for that, uh, we also, it's not only the price, but with uh, Tushin, we are pursuing a strategy that uh, a number of publishers can uh, acquire the entire book free of charge uh, on condition that they reproduce it. Uh, and so we are negotiating with people in America, in Germany, and in Italy so that the book, apart from the publisher itself, will have uh, a kind of a further uh, reproduction in uh, totally un predictable locations, uh, and then the uh, cover of the book may be changed, and each of those publishers can add uh, uh, a number of advertisements. So here is some of the uh, extent of that range. Thank you. Time for some questions. Yeah. Who would like to uh, Who would like to volunteer to be the first one? Anyone, or is this uh, my task? Um. Bob, you gonna start? are very thought-provoking. But as to what it means, I can only suggest that REM has some uh, ac ac access to money. Money? Money. Can you elaborate? No. <laughs> <laughs> what, kind of, what kind of money? Well, what, what do you mean? That, that kind of, uh, only people with money would, money would be able to produce that kind of knowledge? Money to 
Money too? Bill. Will. What do you uh, have yeah. with that hand? You're being a bit too... Uh, well, I'm being deliberately obscure. Uh, uh, okay. Obscure. Obscure. <laughs> 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 if that's appropriate. <laughs> I'm leaving you with a puzzle to equal his puzzle. Oh, uh, okay. So maybe we get back to that. Maybe, uh, maybe I'll ask you a just a very obvious but less opaque. I think one of the things that, uh, that uh, I was uh, hoping you would, uh, you, would, you, you would explain, which I think you have done, but maybe now in more, uh, more precise and direct terms, is that, that uh, uh, the very fact that you're using this particular kind of publication in order to address this, uh, this idea of being engaged with, uh, with the everyday, what it is, what we confront with television, with, with everyday life. And at the same time, you are trying very seriously to address certain kind of political conditions, which, uh, which you are, but one of the things that is part and parcel of, of everyday kind of newspapers is that they're also dealing with with the idea of kind of the relief of boredom. And I think one, when, like, when one looks at the, the content, one can really see something of your anxiety. You know, the kind of, like you don't want to be bored, you want to go through this thing very quickly, and so on and so forth. And in a way, it's quite difficult uh, to see how you are, you are specifically trying to make something of this contemporary situation in order for it to have some kind of impact on the work that you produce. Because if we go through the Japanese version of the, of, of the Berlin uh, uh, you know, embassy and, and, and so on and so forth, they are presented in a completely different fashion in some way. So where is it that the well, work what, actually what becomes? Do you, what, do you mean? what I mean is that there, you're dealing with a world of institutions yeah. which, are, which don't appear to be contaminated with a kind of reality in one sense that you are presenting in the book. So how can one see the world of the book the, the, the juxtaposition of Big Brother hmm. with Vermeer is obviously something that's important for you. How, what, we, what, what is your conclusion in terms of that interplay? That, I mean, it's there. you can say on one level that they're very interesting, but what is it that you get out of that beyond the fact that it's interesting? I, I think uh, in certain cases there, there are uh, kind of explicit uh, moments of resonance uh, with uh, particular projects. Uh, on the other hand, uh, I think it is more uh, a kind of uh, exposition and exhibition of the context uh, in which we work. And uh, for instance, in the case of the Big Brother thing, I think it becomes interesting at the moment that we see that uh, an initial Dutch impulse kind of enlarged at the kind of uh, insane uh, scale then uh, acquires an African uh, and political dimension and therefore has for instance impact on the kind of situation in Lagos and so it is uh, so we are not and, and that is I think the freedom that we took in the book that is not a, a didactic book uh, as a small medium large uh, clearly was but really a book uh, on a kind of much more intuitive level uh, that uh, works sometimes by contrast, sometimes by association, sometimes by hidden connection, and sometimes by explicit connection. Right. And and so and plus, I think that simply the pleasure of writing those kind of uh, insights, and therefore uh, taking architecture uh, not as this kind of plodding and, and kind of slightly set profession, but as a profession that is equally able to participate in kind of cultural commentary. Uh, uh, Th th that is, I guess, the, in the end, the, the, the both the attempt and, and the pleasure. Mm. But I always thought that it, it didn't really have much of a problem dealing with cultural commentary. What it had difficulty with was to actually engage the subject of architecture with certain realities of, of discourse and practice and so on, mm. so that actually it, it was very difficult to, to address certain projects of, of urbanism and imagination that in some ways contributed to, to the sort of environments, the sort of places that we live mm -hmm. in. I mean, in a sense, you were talking about Endomol and the, whatever mm -hmm. they're called, the Dutch, Dutch company. I mean, on one level, of course, it's an interesting thing. I'm not familiar with the African situation because mm -hmm. you know, you, you, I take your word for it. Mm -hmm. But in the European context, 
you could argue that this is also one of the most kind of corrupt types of uh, television mm -hmm. that exists because it really is based on on turning sort of the camera into a zoo of uh, mm -hmm. of human beings mm -hmm. totally degrading them and endomol as a result has become also a fantastically kind of rich mm -hmm. company and it's the head of all these companies that are really mm -hmm. making the benefits mm -hmm. so it's very difficult to, to argue in some ways, based on the evidence that we have, that suddenly Big Brother is, for example, a productive force. No, no, but I mean, that, that, that is not what it's doing at all. I mean, kind of the whole thing is, is actually totally critical of uh, uh, Animal. And in, in, in that sense, it, it's there as, for instance, the embassy has to be kind of generated for the same country and in the same culture that uh, embraces Animal to that extent. So it is about how can you be serious in the same context? Mm -hmm. So it's a really contextual layering, I would say. <coughs> would somebody else ask a question? I can go on. Right. <laughs> there's, there, there's a hand there and there's a hand here. Maybe we'll go to Pete in the back there. Have uh, you got a mic? Yeah, yeah. you've got a mic. Mm -hmm. Okay, we don't, can we have this mic come I've got a, uh, Go. I've got a question about the um, relationship to writing and film culture. And uh, can you hear me? got a question in rela uh, relationship to, uh, of, of writing and film culture yeah. and um, maybe some of work you've done in the past or early on and uh, I'm interested to know that the, the, uh, there's been a shift in how film culture operates with the advent of technology and the ability to change economic and cultural aspects of distri distribution and production uh, for filmmakers with the advent of computers and also the same shifts have occurred in the field of music with the ability of computers and distribution via the internet and oncoming realms of broadcasting in different ways. And in the context of developing a building that is predominantly <coughs> um, looking and functioning around media and film content, I wondered <coughs> how you think the, an equivalent shift is happening within an architectural realm and whether your um, uh, desire to make content cheap and distributable is one equivalent manifestation of that. But I wondered whether, whether there is something that would then apply to the architecture of building and not just the distribution of ideas. And, um, and I'm also intrigued to know whether you actually worked with Russ Meyer, which has been rumored and I'm intrigued to know whether that's true or not. That's a lot of questions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like another lecture. Um, I, th I think that uh, basically, uh, of course, the, the kind of fluid dissemination uh, that, that we have seen in kind of different areas is, is a very seductive uh, thing to which architects seem to uh, have little access, and, and it was certainly a kind of incentive to, to try to find uh, an analogous uh, channel. Uh, and But whether our architecture it itself um, is somehow responding to that or influenced by it is, is hard to say. Uh, although, for instance, I, I could make a presentation of the IIT building which is really for uh, a particular slice of youth culture, uh, w would I could probably make an argument, uh, but, but uh, I don't th see it very, uh, I don't s think there's a kind of very deep effect uh, yet, uh, maybe in non-standard architecture. Is there a deep effect? I, mean, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't. Uh, I don't th really think. But I mean, it's a maybe an interesting discussion whether that actually kind of through its generation, at least with the same implement um, uh, uh, instrumentarium, comes close to that degree of dissemination is is an interesting, but for me, very open question. Mm. Anybody else? Please, you have the mic. It's switched on underneath the red light. Should be Looks switched on. Yep, yes. it's switched on. Very brief question. Um, I was thinking of the title content and what you make of more traditional modes, the sort of um, usual way that architects present things, which is far more sort of perhaps academic, and what you make of that in terms of communicating content. Um. 
what, what do you expect me to say? Ah. Okay. I mean, because I, 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 got I was thinking you might be critical. Huh? I was actually wondering whether there was a play with content and context in your title. Hmm? Um, that's where this question sort of stems from. Yeah. I mean, there are of course kind of millions of ways of kind of talking about architecture, and uh, uh, I've adopted uh, kind of many different ones. I can also give kind of academic uh, kind of lectures, and uh, so uh, I hate to, to give a kind of superficial answer, but of course the the the, the essence of the thing is the book and the show, and not the lecture, uh, and. I just uh, gave a kind of uh, intimate presentation of what we thought when we were doing it. And it's not beyond that, the lecture. I don't think it's any particular status uh, here. But uh, clearly, uh, we are very interested in uh, um, somehow shifting some of the way in which architecture is looked at and, and talked about uh, aggressively. Can I just ask you a question about distribution? Because I think that you made a very clear uh, point about the price of the book, mm -hmm. six ninety nine, mm -hmm. you know, less than ten euros, and it goes back to also the whole juxtaposition between television, for example, and politics, and the statement that you made, which is quite well known that, for example, many many more people vote for Big Brother than they do for Tony Blair, mm -hmm. so um, that also presents mm -hmm. a kind of reality. So, let's say if we are shifting towards another form of publication which has in one sense a kind of equivalence of uh, the, the magazine in terms of its circulation. Yes. And it's dealing with these kinds of uh, topics in, in some ways differently. What are the sorts of, of, of specific uh, uh, products, if, if, if this is not an unfair thing, are you expecting to, to get from this particular kind of, of, of strategy of really addressing the work differently? A byproduct of this, this question is to do with the fact that all these journals, all these magazines, or all these programs mm -hmm. like Big Brother, in one sense, they also have to do certain things in mm -hmm. order to sell a certain mm -hmm. number of copies. So do you feel that you've had to also do something in terms of the way that you've packaged the publication in order for it to sell somehow more copies was I mean because presumably the key mm -hmm. thing was not only the six ninety nine yeah, yeah. yeah whether what are the concessions that you had to make in order for the book to be popular not just because it's six ninety nine but it actually at the level of content it also becomes popular well I think that uh, in the beginning I was talking about this uh, burden yeah <coughs> which, which is a kind of very uh, um, self indulgent term. Uh, but, but of course, th the burden itself uh, can be used in a certain way. So I think that uh, I'm in a very luxurious position, or we're in a very luxurious position that we didn't have to make any concession to do this, because you know, the content didn't change. We, we, we could, we were strictly master of our own, <coughs> of the our own identity. Uh, but, but I think that more people are, are in that position. Yeah? And I, I, I'm, I'm a bit a bit surprised by your kind of big brother moment. Why? Why? Well, because big brother is kind of not not for me the big thing. What what is for me the big uh, kind of interesting thing is that there are, uh, th that you feel that the yes regime is a kind of teetering edifice, yeah? and 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 therefore we found it kind of interesting to. Perhaps uh, kind of represent its, uh, on one hand, its excess, uh, the moment that its excess turns perhaps in, mutates into something that has different uh, implications. And uh, a, a kind of the scanning of the world in terms of how conditions are specific and how specific conditions enable perhaps different projects to, to emerge. No, that, no, no. that would be my description of the book. No, 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 Maybe no, very self-indulgent. No, 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 that's, that's, a, yeah. that's, that's very good. There, I'm, I'm also being very selfish because I really want to learn something very, very specific, mm. which is really the moment at which the political, for you, becomes part and parcel of an architectural project because this is, this is a very clear interest that, that, that you have. So I ne I'm trying to understand, for example, the publication, this the content, 
the manner in which, for example, it addresses some of the problematics of, for example, CCTV, you're also dealing in reality with a particular kind of regime, a particular mm -hmm. kind of project. And then on the one hand, we can talk about the, the incredible discoveries of the, of the high rise that mm -hmm. you're dealing with and the engineering of that. On the other hand, you're also dealing with a very particular kind of project in a very specific kind mm -hmm. of context. So I'm, I'm simply trying to understand how some of your own analysis of um, ironies and so on and so forth of this practice are actually in some ways working for you, preventing you from the kind of project that you want to, to make. Um, I'm not being cynical about it. Mm -hmm. but I'm actually mm -hmm. trying to sort of see how you, how you infiltrate the work with this material. So let's take CCTV and let's take the uh, content. I'm interested in, in the moment that that stuff actually enters the project, because when you describe Which CCTV, for example, the CCTV project, when you describe CCTV, you describe it in terms of its um, engineering uh, uh, feat or in terms of its contribution to high-rise and so on mm -hmm. and so forth. But we don't discuss it in terms of the politics of CCTV. At well, but I, I did that here before. I, I mean, I that's the only reason. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, uh, no, and, and, and actually, that is a very important uh, part of it. And, and I, this, uh, the, when I presented it here, I was very explicit that um, I thought the, this ambiguous relationship between communism and uh, uh, apparent capitalism in, in China and uh, control and lack of control uh, or the state and, and the private uh, enables, it also creates a kind of space and that what is interesting to me in, this, in that space is that uh, n it, it uh, enables you not to immediately think when you're uh, confronted with complexity to start to dismantle, which is now, I think, here our, our practice, inevitably. Because uh, if we are working on a TV station, we put the studios in a big, in a cheap part in a meadow, and the kind of uh, business people in the CBD and the creative people in a kind of in in Hackney, uh, 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 but th that there uh, would be a kind of space where um, the collective, you know, in in, in that uh, to 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 use the word uh, uh, can be articulated, mm -hmm. yeah? and and that is clearly you know in that space it's it's not clear whether it's a residue on its way out or whether it is a kind of deliberately defined space or whether it is a space that you could actually kind of enlarge and 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 use i mean kind of and i think in that sense the work on preservation you know would i would call that a really political project yeah. in the sense that by using that space and by using the kind of freedoms that are implied in it uh, you can hope to discover something We need a microphone because there are lots of. Content has to be discovered. Now we've got the uh, PR organization, PR organized team, where we have a new brand of uh, employee called a content provider. Mm -hmm. So what I want to ask Ram is, does he say that we can turn from manipulating form? to manipulating content. Yeah, uh, yes, of course, or I would. Uh, I think that whether architects manipulate form or content, they are, uh, I think it's a profession like all of us that manipulate content, but that has resigned itself to uh, manipulate a very narrow section of content. Uh, and, and, and you know, we, we are very happy in, in living in that uh, condition. Uh, but, but I think there's nothing kind of radically new or different. Uh, th that's, I'm, I'm surprised that the slides of Shandigar didn't evoke uh, a, a, a kind of intense uh, moment of uh, reflection. Uh, because uh, that is also content, you know, per excellence content uh, uh, as, as imagined by the architect, uh, more than form. The, the, the Chandigarh, the, the, the sort of philosophy behind Chandigarh was that, and of all of all the, that kind of Sashlik architecture, in, in sort of in, in, 
initiated in the 1920s was that the content would be directly expressible in the form. That, that, in other words, that, that um, there was a correlation between uh, content, which was an abstract, which was uh, um, the discourse on which is abstract, and form, where the content actually for, takes takes on a physical hmm. a physical uh, um, mm -hmm. shape. Yeah. Um, now it seems to me that what's the situation now nowadays is that there is a, a sort of radical disjunction between the idea of content and the idea of form in architecture, mm -hmm. which either results in the in the kind of Gary or, or Lebeskin kind of mm -hmm. um, uh, hysteria about form or it results in a completely neutral building, uh, which um, f from a formal point of view is, is completely neutral, mm -hmm. but, but which contains the, con the, the, the human content and the activity is itself is, is thought of as having in, in, it, in, in inside itself its own form, not requiring an external form in order to pro propagate itself in public. What I'm suggesting is a problem, not, not a solution. Yeah. This, is, this, is what, this is the thing I was feeling when I looked at the Chandigarh thing. Yeah. It seemed to me that the, the, with Corbusier, the, the notion of the content of, that, of the uh, political and social content of that yeah. building was something that Corbusier thought could be directly converted into form. Mm -hmm. Do you think that that is possible today? Uh, no, clearly, do you think it has any meaning today? Well, I think uh, yeah, I think it can be done, but, but uh, it will be perceived in, in in a kind of such a multitude of different perspectives uh, that uh, you know the intention in a way becomes mood. And and what what was interesting to to be there is how how it is inhabited, uh, of course, without any connection between the the current condition and the. Uh, uh, original intentions, uh, not even remotely, because of course uh, it is also the kind of zone of conflict between uh, Islam and, and Hindu and a whole kind of knot of uh, uh, completely non-architectural kind of uh, projects. And so, but it's still inhabited and, and used in a kind of very intense way, so it, it really makes a kind of mockery or the definitive relevance of any intention. And, and that is a, a, a total alarm for all of us, of course. And, 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 and that is kind of, for instance, something you can say, maybe this is a kind of private concern, how it is possible that everything that is 10 years old looks so infinitely more dated than anything that is uh, 300 years old, like the Hermitage. I mean, just to throw out one. Anybody else ask a question? No? Yeah? I, mean, I was just curious that you um, see kind of an escape from the Yes regime mm -hmm. in places like China, India, perhaps Africa as a kind of emerging mm -hmm. economies. Because uh, I feel quite differently about this. So, uh, maybe um, I feel kind of a, nearly an intense period of uh, original capitalism or original accumulation happening there. So there I feel the, uh, the kind of um, pressure of monetary concerns is much higher. But what makes maybe a kind of um, allows for possibilities of originality there is that the kind of competitive measuring out of uh, labor quantities which go into different phenomena has not been kind of established. Mm. So you can have kind of temporary is, uh, things, yeah. kind of extremities and, 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 mm. and crazy f the developments. Uh, but the outlook behind that for me is a kind of hyper yes regime. You have these Potemkin corridors and you have temporary flushes of capital in concentrated in kind of rubber barons who can ignore for a moment 
because of this concentration, what has been kind of measured out with kind of pension funds competing and measuring everything out, uh, temporarily give you perhaps or others who come in a kind of uh, sense of, of radical newness and, and originality, but this is a kind of, uh, I think, a very temporary phenomenon one and a very highly questionable to be laudated. And certainly for me, we, no hope we? for to be laudated or be or kind of be welcomed. Uh, um, and for me, it's, uh, again, it's not the, uh, um, it's just the birth pangs of an extreme yes regime. Well, uh, le let me, uh, I mean, I, I, I totally support y what you're saying. I mean, I'm, I'm deeply aware of it and it would be terrible if this lecture was taken uh, as a kind of uh, advocacy of uh, or naivety about uh, conditions in the East as a kind of uh, Eden uh, uh, which is not participating. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, it, it's not so much that I'm saying that it is kind of free of those uh, vices or that logic uh, because it's opposite that they exist there in sometimes exacerbated uh, form. But it's more a kind of sense that the entire edifice is creaking to some extent and that you know you find there but pro presumably also here kind of moments uh, where some other direction is uh, is announced uh, but but on the other hand um, I'm curious because you have the experience yourself uh, to have a counter question kind of you don't advocate it but what what do you do then if you don't you have to suspend conscience and relish in the dynamics of a raw kind of uh, capitalist stage. But uh, what, what I find interesting, the reflection, I can do that and, and or, uh, you know, be drawn into this, but by forgetting about this idea that you are there for mankind, it just becomes a kind of exhilarating project of, 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 or enterprise, but it, 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 I don't see the kind of, uh, I wouldn't be able to announce as in a lecture where other values of, uh, um, where this kind of uh, necessity of, of uh, working for mankind is kind of implicit in such a forum to be promoted. I couldn't do that. I can't kind of, what I do is I kind of uh, uh, relish in this quietly. That wasn't so quiet though. No, but yeah. I, I'm not sure that I would agree with that idea of, of just sort of relishing in, 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 in these values quietly. And I, I, I would have thought the argument would go that after these moments of relish, there are in fact certain particular uh, moments of closure, some things where you also reassess, you revalue. And I think my questions to Ram are really based on this idea of the moments of revaluation, because I think that what is clearly the case is that I think that that, that, that content is, 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 is incredible in terms of the diversity and the range of projects and the effort that it shows because it's, it's on one level it's sort of purporting to be something of the moment mm -hmm. but on the other hand it actually is a few years worth of work mm -hmm. in there and it's not something that's uh, you know a kind of editor put together in, in two weeks in terms of so it actually has different kinds of trends and, and yeah, I think that, yeah, it, yeah, and that yeah. I think is very very important that we all recognize that you're really dealing with a, with a kind of systematic project that has been built and it also deals with so many of the issues and questions that you've confronted and, and, and the anxieties. And I, I, I still feel that we have to, each one of us, in a sense, draw the bits or look, you know, moments for us that we can kind of benefit or, or make mm -hmm. sense mm -hmm. out, of, out of this. Because on one level, it can be something that doesn't really make sense because you open it at each stage and by itself it doesn't make sense. So somehow there must be many ways in which all these mm -hmm. dynamics are understood but also still I think at different moments what we should kind of make sense from it mm -hmm. and that's when you actually take your different political uh, posture or position because that's why I keep going on mm -hmm. about the big brother thing not because I think I'm accusing you of anything to do with it. But because also right now we have, for example, I don't know, we've been living through a month of I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. The British newspapers in London, okay. the British newspapers have been every single day on the first page. This has been the national news more than anything else, more than anything else. So it's actually completely part of everyday conscious. It's part of this, this particular culture. And I think we 
also must owe it to ourselves to produce some sense of resentment to the manner in which this has been, uh, you know, happening uh, here. Um, I, I, and I think it's so pervasive, that in, but at the same time so instrumental, which is the, the attraction. But these attractions, I think, have to be no, I, sliced, I, I, and one really makes kind of productive <laughs> results. I, I don't know, somehow. Yeah, I would like to kind of make one more comment to, kind of to, to the two of you. Um, um, <laughs> yeah, we, we have all been kind of aware and familiar with the kind of nice little Faustian kind of moments uh, that, that are possible today. And kind of so you do, you articulate, you get the money. But uh, what um, the, the point of this lecture was is that um, uh, maybe the, the kind of huge disadvantages of a kind of position like we have, which is like, uh, can be also used to, uh, uh, to, to be more active in terms of defining our own agenda. And I think that in that sense, uh, the work for Hermitage uh, or, or for Europe or for the, the Pass of Beijing has really nothing to do with that um, um, Faustian mm -hmm. kind of uh, those Faustian moments, and and that is for us, uh, I think, the, the the kind of real sense of pleasure at this moment. I think that's a wonderful moment to uh, <laughs> to uh, to stop. I, I really uh, appreciate that you took the time before all the. Uh, the, the RIBA and gold medal and celebrations, which are which are you truly deserve in terms of your, uh, you know you do, uh, <laughs> in terms of in terms of in terms of everything, but I think it also takes certain, uh, you know, guts to uh, the night before to really deal with material that's that's raw and fresh and, mm. and stuff that you're thinking about, and it's just that some of us are a bit slower. Than you yeah. and don't get as anxious as as yeah. as, uh, as as often as you do. So mm. you have to just let us catch okay. up. Yeah. Thank, anyway, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.